Well, this is typical of what would have been built by Western Europeans probably um, from maybe a thousand years ago to maybe 200 years ago. When you build something like this, it's not completely standard. It might have a little curl on one end to the other, but you, and you can't codify it very well. And the bank is not gonna want to loan money on something that's just not a real standard thing that they can see, okay, well, this is so many square feet and it's built out of this technology. And they might say, well, this is too strange for us. And that's one reason why all kinds of alternative structures are just there outside that you can't get financing on them. And that's what defines the ability to have a house in our society. Amazingly, these are very fireproof too because the logs are so big that they don't burn very fast. A modern house with all the little bitty sticks, you know, in it just goes up in a heartbeat. Whereas timber frames could often just burn. They just chip off the, the char and they would just reuse the building. I think it's good to be able to build your own structure and to build a building that's mortgage free because if you end up paying that mortgage, it's something that is a constant source of something you have to do and it can affect all kinds of aspects of your life. If you're able to build something with just the wood on your land, and not have to get a mortgage for it, you're way better off in the long run. And my grandfathers taught me when I was probably six years old, we built some timber frames. I mean, they were still building this way because they, you know, they had land and they needed to build buildings like chicken coops and storage sheds and stuff. And we just would take the materials we had on hand and use them and build timber frames or log cabins or whatever we could do with the materials we had. If this building were to rot down, in 100, 200 years, however long it might take. You know, there's no pollution or anything else left in the ground. It's just using the materials you've gotten on the site and it can just go right back into the site. Everyone gets together in the community to put up a building. You're borrowing the goodwill of your neighbors and you might borrow the goodwill from 10 different neighbors and then when it comes your turn, you will pay back those payments by going to 10 different house raisings and the same thing. And so it's just a different kind of payment. We cut some locust logs and um, brought them all down here. And so we measured all of this, dug the holes, and started cutting the joints out. And the idea behind this is you can see where these are fitted together, and on the other side, there's more fitting, and it locks it together so it's very rigid. So when you shake it, when you push on it, you can't budge it at all, because you don't want to be able to have a building that's all floppy. We use traditional tools. We use axes and adzes and drill bits and saws. There's no place to plug in power here, so we did it all by hand. It's perfectly possible to build this without power. And with just hand saws and other things, and we used big crosscut saws just like I used when I was a little kid with my grandparents. I think I was 12 years old before my grandfather actually got a chainsaw. So before that time, we cut everything by hand. You can go out into the forest, even beyond the end of the road, and just carry a little backpack full of tools and build something, which is what our ancestors did. Well, it's really a good feeling. I mean, to know that you can make your own shelter. You can actually keep the weather off you. If suddenly we didn't have any oil to, to ship stuff in from Canada, then we'd have to be using our local wood. And the, you can see the forest here is full of trees. And we can use them just as they are. It's, it's fun for me to just take and make objects, starting from raw materials, either the clay from the ground, or the trees, or the rocks, and actually create good workable things that help me in my environment. And that is what has inspired me my whole life. I'm not a musician, I'm not, not a writer. I mean, that's, that's what I do, is I like to do it. So, you know, everyone has different things that they enjoy and that just happens to be my thing.